This is News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us. We'll get to those stories in a moment, but first, we are continuing to see election results rolling in from the election last week. That's right. Clerks started reporting results about an hour or so ago, and in the last few minutes, the Democratic presidential primary was called for Joe Biden. We'll have more on that in just a moment. Our Madeline O'Neill is live from East Washington, where the city of Madison clerks are currently counting the ballots. Maddie? Well, counting began just about an hour ago. We're actually in what used to be a tattoo parlor outfitted with workstations now. There's about seven to eight tabulators. I'll step out of the way and show you the stations. We've got plenty of people helping out. Social distancing about six feet apart from each other as they deal with the thousands of absentee ballots that have come in. Now, according to the city of Madison clerk, about 600 of those were not postmarked. A decision was made right before they started counting to accept the unpostmarked Postmarked ballots that were that came in on April 8th, 9th, and 10th. That was based on how long mail delivery is taking. Any that came after that date, about 20, will be looked at individually by the board of canvassers. We've already seen that happen once today. The decision was made to count that particular ballot because they contacted the voter in question who certified they had sent the ballot in by April 7th. Now, as uh, far as how long this will take, there's a sign outside that outside that says 4 p.m. until done. The clerk says she doesn't really know how long this will take because they've never done this before, but she says she's hopeful it will end by a reasonable hour. Yeah, they look, they look busy behind you there, Maddie. And, Definitely, uh, we, working we, fast. This is new to all of us, so we've never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Maddie, live downtown, thank you. One of three statewide races, of course, the Democratic presidential primary. We just mentioned a moment ago, Bernie Sanders. He got out of the race the day after the ballots were cast. You can see Joe Biden has been declared the winner. The, real, the only uh, thing to be determined is by how much. 18% of precincts reporting a 65-29 advantage. These results come just hours after Senator Sanders actually endorsed Biden's presidential candidacy. So today I am asking all Americans, I'm asking every Democrat, I'm asking every independent, I'm asking a lot of Republicans to come together in this campaign to support your candidacy, oh. which I endorse, to make certain that we defeat somebody who I believe, and I'm speaking just for myself now, uh, is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. The two former rivals made that joint online appearance today. Biden and Sanders clashed throughout the primary over policy issues such as Medicare for all. The endorsement stands in contrast to the extended 2016 fight between Sanders and Hillary Clinton, who became the nominee that year. Now, another statewide race we're watching closely. The race for state Supreme Court incumbent Daniel Kelly facing Dane County Circuit Court Judge Jill Karofsky. 18% of precincts reporting Kelly with a slight 51-49 edge. And the third statewide race we're following is over Marcy's Law, which would expand protections for crime victims in the court system. It would ensure victims or their families are notified of the release of an accused perpetrator among nearly 20 other changes to current rights for victims laid out in the Wisconsin Constitution. An overwhelming yes at this point. In the Madison School Board, seat six between two newcomers, Christina Gomez-Schmidt and Maya Pearson. Gomez-Schmidt with the early advantage in that race with just 1% one pre one of precincts reporting. Another school board seat, seat seven, incumbent Nikki Vandermeulen squaring off with Wayne Strong. Strong with the early advantage, again, just 1% of precincts reporting. Reporting a handful of referenda on ballots in our area, including Cambridge, Columbus, Dodgeland, Johnson Creek, Parkview, and Sauk Prairie Schools. We'll have those updated on our newscast. And as always, stay with channel3000.com. As we continue to see election results come in over the course of the evening tonight, political experts aren't sure this will be the end. And Amy Reed spoke to some today and joins us now to explain. Amy? There were multiple lawsuits filed before the election, and there are there's a possibility that more could be filed after today. Already, a group of voters in Milwaukee have filed a federal lawsuit saying their First and Fourteenth Amendments have been violated. And last week, Judge Jill Karofsky wouldn't rule out litigation, even if results are brought to the courts after tonight. UW political science expert Barry Burden thinks people will be watching to see how the votes turn out. And aside from the coronavirus itself, this was the major news item that people were consuming while they were trapped at home. So I think there's a lot of anticipation about what the results will say tonight and to what degree people can read into that. 
Now, as we told you, clerks could begin counting and posting results at 4 p.m., but they'll have to do so while also handling challenges with absentee ballots and postmarks, as some don't have the full date marked. On Friday, the Elections Commission said clerks can count postmarks that read April 2020, so long as the postmaster certifies that postmark was used on the 7th. Some of these rules were decided in the Wisconsin and U.S. Supreme Courts. A challenge for any potential lawsuit is the courts could decide since they already ruled on a piece of the election to just not hear any more cases on it. Amy, thank you. All right, so sunshine and some green grass on the Capitol lawn there, but it was a windy, chilly start to the week. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalta. Gary? And our Northwestern viewers had some snow on the ground to start the day, but we were very fortunate after a very stormy weekend. Uh, in fact, right now, as we take a look at the uh, current conditions, uh, the uh, visible cloud track across southern Wisconsin, you can see how the skies have started to clear up. There's another little band of clouds coming in, and that white band that's not moving, that's the snow that fell from northwestern Iowa through southeastern Minnesota and then north, north central. Wisconsin. There's that little band of snow showers coming in from the west. Probably will just taper down to some flurries as it moves through mid to late evening and then skies will clear out after that on high resolution radar. You can see maybe a few flurries getting into western Grant County. Temperatures right now are generally in the middle to upper 30, so we're not expecting any of the snow to stick. And overnight skies will turn mostly clear. Temperatures will drop to around 25 by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow will be a variably cloudy and cold day with a high of only 38 degrees. At least we won't have the wind like we had today. And there's the possibility for a rain or snow shower. About uh, Wednesday will be about the same, but we will start to see a moderation in temperatures at the end of the week. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. Wisconsin now has more than 3,400 confirmed coronavirus cases and 155 people have died. Some researchers say yesterday was our peak in resource use. Amanda Quintana joins us now with those details. Amanda. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, known as IHME, supported by Bill and Melinda Gates, says Wisconsin's hospital resource use peaked yesterday. Their graph shows we still had more hospital and ICU beds available than needed. That's good news. But their death projections show the number of people dying from the virus will only start to flatten at the end of the month, continuing through July. In today's update from DHS, experts say we're seeing fewer infections and less of a strain on the health care system. Our data and our models tell us that the policies are working to flatten the curve. When we hear flatten the curve, we think graphs and lines and color coding and numbers, but we need to remember that the curves on those graphs represent people and the flat line indicates our hospital capacity. DHS also added some new data to their website today showing 16% of those who have tested positive are health care workers. 993 or about 29% of those who tested positive require hospitalization. And some good news for Wisconsin, according to the new COVID-19 projects from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Their projections show that Wisconsin peaked yesterday when it comes to using resources in the state. The model shows that 162 ICU beds are needed and there are 172 beds available. The projections also show Wisconsin peaked in deaths per day on April 5th when we saw 20 deaths per day. In all, the model projects the state will see 357 deaths. We're also learning more about a plan that could make the Aligned Energy Center into a care facility for the South Central Wisconsin region. Our Gabriella Becerra shares what we know about the potential transformation. If the Federal Emergency Management Agency approves the governor's application to turn the Alliant Energy Center into an alternative care facility, it would likely only take weeks to get it up and running. Dane County Executive Joe Parisi says the facility is expected to host non-COVID patients, which would free up rooms in local hospitals. A combination of healthcare professionals from UW Health, Unity Point Meritor, and SSM Health will be working together to treat those patients. Although Parisi says he's hoping the facility won't have to be used at all. Now, this is in preparation for what would be, you know, likely a worst case scenario. Um, what we're hoping for is that everyone can continue to strictly adhere to the safer at home guidelines so that we can achieve a best case scenario. The facility is expected to have over 300 beds that could change after the state and Army Corps of Engineers complete their assessment. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, we'll share why Parisi says it's especially important to adhere to those safer at home guidelines when there's an alternative care facility in Madison. Gabriella Becerra, News 3 Now. The Army Corps of Engineers has already started mobilizing to develop an alternative care facility at the Exposition Center at the Wisconsin State Fair Park. 
The Wisconsin Assembly is scheduled to meet in a virtual extraordinary session tomorrow to take up a coronavirus relief bill. The Senate is expected to follow suit on Wednesday. The 87-page bill discusses how the state will tackle relief from the effects of the virus across the economy, health care and schools, among other areas. Republican leaders in the legislature kept their word on including the removal of the one-week waiting period for unemployment benefits. For health care, lawmakers included in the bill a provision that prohibits a person from being billed higher for out-of-network coronavirus-related care, such as testing and treatment. Evers said on Friday he was hopeful that a bipartisan deal could be reached. We have a whole breakdown of the bill on our website, channel3000.com. The death toll from coronavirus is now more than 22,000 nationwide, up 4,000 since Friday. New York's governor says the death toll in his state has climbed above 10,000, but says the worst is over. Two car makers are now working to address the lack of life-saving medical equipment and protective gear for frontline healthcare workers. GM started making ventilators Monday. The federal government ordered the company to build more than 6,000 by June. And this week, Ford will start production of respirators, reusable hospital gowns, and face masks. The president is preparing to announce another team of experts to look at when many Americans will be able to get back to work. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's working with several other state governors on a coordinated reopening plan. While President Trump tweeted Monday, it is the decision of the president. It's not going to be we flick a switch and everybody comes out of their house and gets in their car and waves and hugs each other and the economy all starts up. Meanwhile, Congress remains at an impasse over additional funding for the Paycheck Protection Program as officials warn it could run out of money by the end of the week. The administration requested an additional $250 billion for the popular small business loan program, but Democrats also want to include more money for hospitals and state and local governments. A COVID-19 patient at UW Health has received the first transfusion of plasma donated from a local patient who has recovered from coronavirus. UW Health and the UW School of Medicine and Public Health, part of the COVID-19 Convalescent Plasma Program, it's a nationwide study investigating whether giving plasma from people who survived COVID-19 to patients who are seriously ill can help shorten the duration or severity of the illness. Convalescent plasma therapy has been studied since 1901, previously in other respiratory infections, the Spanish flu, SARS, and MERS, which are both coronaviruses. COVID-19 currently has no cure, and so everybody is out there looking to see if they can find something that will help. Short of a vaccine, the best option we think that we have to, to fight this virus is the antibody. There are so many people out here doing so much, uh, the, the people in the medical field that are doing so much for the rest of us. It's nice to feel that we can play some small role in, in giving back and, and helping out a little bit. People who have recovered from a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19 and would like to donate their plasma for use in this experimental treatment can learn more on the UW Health website. The University of Wisconsin system is changing some admission policies to make it easier to apply and enroll in college next year. Application fees will go down to $25 for the summer 2020 semester and beyond, except at UW-Madison. Application fee waivers will also be available for students experiencing financial hardships due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Students can also use unofficial transcripts for admission consideration and will not be held responsible for the cancellation of ACT or SAT testing dates or other grading system changes at their current schools. The American Players Theater is postponing the start of its 2020 season due to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, anyone who bought tickets to shows that end up being canceled will be able to request a refund. Exchange tickets for a show that is in the season, transfer the value of the tickets to the 2021 season, or convert the value of the ticket to a tax-deductible contribution. Theater leaders are working to figure out a new schedule. More information about the season will be released next month. And tonight, Overture Center will announce its lineup for the 2021 season. They'll announce the lineup on Facebook. That'll be live at 7 o'clock. Season will feature more than 40 performances, including seven Broadway shows. Five of those shows will be making their Madison premieres this season. The stream will offer viewers a chance to win a free Overture Presents 
subscription. Another big story we're following tonight, the aftermath of tornadoes. It left dozens of people dead after sweeping through the southern part of the country. That's up next. And tonight at 6, we know there are more questions than answers in our world right now, leading to more people reaching out to psychics. We'll tell you what people are searching for. That story at 6. And Wall Street returns from the three-day holiday weekend and takes a 328-point dive for the Dow. The Nasdaq adds 39 points. The S&P 500 gives back 28. We'll be right back. started with one man and his father's simple advice. He said, son, make sure the quality of work is worthy of the family name. Over 20 years and thousands of clients later, Fry Construction still follows this advice, giving you the very best craftsmanship for roofing, windows, and gutters. If you want to trust the work done on your home, trust the family name that's behind it. Start with Fry Construction and Home Improvement at FryConstruction.com. More than 70 years ago, we at Festival Foods began serving this proud state, building strong relationships founded on trust, compassion, and our unwavering commitment to ensuring that you and your family feel at home every time you visit Festival Foods. It's times like these that remind us that family and home are what truly matter most. So we're using this moment just to let you know that Festival Foods is here for you because family always looks after family. Be safe, Wisconsin. The way you get through hard times is to hold strong to your values. At Group Health Cooperative, our common values have sustained us for over four decades. Now is no different. We are here, in our clinics, but we want you to be safer at home. That's why GHC has more ways for you to get care anywhere, anytime, day or night. Be seen, be safe, be home. We will get through this together, and we will all get better together. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure, with 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. To most people, the idea of fighting is unpleasant, but sometimes it's necessary to fight. If you or your family has been injured, you'll want a good law firm on your side to make things right again. Habish, Habish, and Rotier. We fight for what's right. Tonight at 6, we talked to a local psychic about how their industry has seen an uptick in people searching for answers. And a look at how the state and county are preparing the Alliant Energy Center to provide additional hospital space. That's tonight on News 3 Now at 6. It isn't being evenly distributed. With not enough COVID-19 tests to go around in Wisconsin, how are healthcare facilities making the call on who gets tested and who doesn't? It's the fear of the unknown. Even these smaller towns need them. News 3 Now investigates tonight at 10. The death toll from storms in the south rises to at least 30. Well, that severe weather outbreak that started on Easter in the deep south caused flooding, mudslides, and more than a million power outages. Officials say 11 died in Mississippi, six more in Georgia. Other deaths were reported in Arkansas and the Carolinas. In one neighborhood in Hampton County, South Carolina, some homes are covered with tree limbs, others destroyed. Every tree in the yard just broke and sheds fell over and everything just within a matter of seconds. In Tennessee, the National Weather Service has confirmed an EF3 tornado. Drone video in Bassfield, Mississippi shows acres of trees. Look at that video. Snapped in half along with homes blown to pieces, roofs ripped to shreds, and vehicles smashed as well. The northern part of our state ended up with some really inconvenient weather yesterday. All kinds of snow. Some places in the far northern part of the state got more than a foot. Most of us around here just woke up with a dusting. And Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now. And, you know, it wasn't great here yesterday, Gary, but it appears this was the place to be. Yeah, we were literally right in between the severe weather part of the, of the storm and the snow part of the storm. 
When we talked about the potential for a severe weather outbreak for Easter Sunday, we weren't kidding. Take a look at all the severe weather reports that literally started in Texas late Saturday afternoon with softball-sized hail near Del Rio, several tornado touchdowns in Louisiana, a lot of wind damage and tornado touchdowns. Uh, some of these tornadoes strong to violent. Uh, they continued into uh, Georgia and Tennessee last night and now into the Carolinas, even up into uh, parts of the mid-Atlantic states and Pennsylvania today. And then the northern part of the storm brought a swath of moderate to heavy snow from northwestern Iowa through southeastern Minnesota and much of northern and central Wisconsin. Some places up uh, north of where Einlander got more than a foot of snow and some places to the uh, west of Marquette, Michigan got around two feet of snow. So we were right in between severe weather to the south and the heavy snow in the winter part of the storm to the north. And this is actually tornado and severe weather awareness week in Wisconsin. Today we'll talk about the difference between a watch and a warning. A lot of people still get confused about this and the terms watch and warning are not interchangeable. A watch means exactly what, what the word says. We're watching for the potential for severe weather. The conditions are right, so it's a matter of when those uh, storms are going to uh, occur. But when a warning is issued, that's when we're actually seeing severe weather or it's expected to occur imminently. And so at that point, you need to seek shelter, uh, depending on whether it's a severe thunderstorm or a tornado warning. Uh, but uh, again, uh, sometimes severe thunderstorms can produce tornadoes very rapidly, so keep that in mind. Three things to know in the four it's going to be cold the next couple of days with some afternoon rain and snow showers for both tomorrow and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday will be a little better, still pretty chilly though with high temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. And by the weekend, temperatures should return near uh, to near normal levels in the upper 50s with uh, generally a dry weekend, maybe a possibility for uh, a couple of showers on Sunday. A few flurries moving into western Wisconsin, southwestern Wisconsin right now. Uh, we could see those move through uh, this evening, but other than that, uh, things actually starting to calm down. Those strong wind gusts uh, have gusted anywhere between about 35 and 40 miles per hour, but they are starting to diminish now. As we look at weather track, the severe weather has now swept off the eastern seaboard, and now the colder air is just starting to plunge in, and that's going to be around at least for several days. Temperatures, right, these are current temperatures, 20s and 30s across much of the upper Midwest, 40s all the way down to the Ohio River, and that's where temperatures start to get back into the 50s. Compared to 24 hours ago, you can see the big temperature drop that we've had here and areas to our south. So our forecast calls for variably cloudy skies tomorrow. A little more sunshine in the morning, more cloud cover in the afternoon. Possibility for a rain or snow shower to pop up in the afternoon. But the high temperature, 38 degrees, that's almost 20 degrees below average. And the 7 to 10 day forecast calls for a slight chance for an afternoon rain or snow shower for both tomorrow and Wednesday with high temperatures around 40. And then mid to upper 40s Thursday and Friday, we get back to near normal temperatures for the weekend. Slight chance of a shower Sunday. But notice mostly dry weather during that time period. Wednesday of next week, maybe a shower or thunderstorm chance, but temperatures Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week back into the 60s. So hopefully we have something to look forward to by that point. Yes, we will look forward to that, Gary. Thank you. And ahead on News for Now at 5, how the Milwaukee Brewers are working together to help Miller Park workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Do you know the secret to having the perfect lawn? Maple Leaf Landscaping does. With their six-step turf care program, you can have a beautiful lawn all season long. Check their website for special discounts and leave the yard work to Maple Leaf, your year-round property care experts. For almost 50 years, we've built trust within our communities by making customer delight our top priority. That trust allows us to improve lives one home at a time. During this challenging time, we want to make sure your needs are being met without stress by offering two-for-one windows with no interest and no payments for one year. So go ahead, visit us online, or call now from the comfort of home. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for felt Co. No one asked for this to happen, but this is our time when our hearts, our humanity, and our communities rise. This moment will challenge us. It will define us. It's why we are here, but this moment is not bigger than us, and we will show up every day for you.
Unity Point Health Meritor, a partner of UW Health. Know how much you matter to this world. We asked real customers what they really love about Spectrum Internet and TV. Spectrum Internet has the fastest speeds for everything I do. There is no turning wheel. It's immediate. Spectrum is the fastest. Bam. <laughs> Get the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance with Spectrum Internet, delivering starting speeds of 200 megabits. That's more than enough for all your devices for $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. I can't get over how much on-demand Spectrum has. I can literally watch a new movie every night. Boom. This is my position all day. <laughs> I got all my shows, and he's got all his shows. With the Spectrum TV app, I can watch live TV anywhere. It's perfect. Add Spectrum TV and enjoy more free HD and more free on-demand. Plus, use the Spectrum TV app to watch live TV on the go, all from $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. The fact that they don't have contracts, that says a lot about their service. I love it. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. Call 833-906-4499 today. Hi, it's Jan from Toyota. As part of your community, we're here to help you during these challenging times. Keeping your Toyota safe and reliable is important, especially right now. Many of our service centers are open. Schedule service online and drop off and pick up your vehicle with no contact. Need to replace your old vehicle? Most Toyota dealers offer online shopping and will defer your first payment for 90 days. We're here for you. Contact your local Toyota dealer to see how they can help. Toyota. Do you know the secret to having the perfect lawn? Maple Leaf Landscaping does. With their six-step turf care program, you can have a beautiful lawn all season long. Check their website for special discounts and leave the yard work to Maple Leaf, your year-round property care experts. Members of the Milwaukee Brewers, along with the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers, are helping Miller Park workers. Players Ryan Braun, Lorenzo Kane, Corey Knabel, Josh Lindblom, Brent Suter, and Christian Yelich, along with Bob Euchre, have contributed $300,000 to help provide financial assistance to Miller Park game day workers who have lost wages due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The goal of the fund is to raise $1 million for the workers. And if you're still a little sad due to the lack of sports, the Brewers are bringing back some of their classic games. Tonight at 7, Fox Sports Wisconsin will be airing the Brewers and Cardinals World Series Game 1 from back in 1982. And tomorrow on Brewers.com, they'll be airing a game from 2009. Wednesday, Euchre, he'll be broadcasting the 2008 Wild Card Game between the Brewers and Cubs. And then Thursday and Saturday, Fox Sports Wisconsin will have the 1982 World Series games four and five. People from all walks of life are pitching in to help with the fight against the coronavirus and that includes celebrities. One of those stars is Ryan Seacrest. He's donating a million dollars to help first responders in New York and Los Angeles. Seacrest said he was motivated by a news story about first responders sleeping in their cars in New York to keep them from putting their loved ones at risk. According to People, three quarters of the money will go toward housing and feeding 200 New York EMTs and first responders with the fire department for the next six weeks. And stay with us while we'll the final check of your first warned forecast. Social distancing and family quarantines are a jarring reality for kids. It's a big adjustment. So it's important that we adults do what we can to help them navigate this new normal. Encourage your kids to ask questions and give them honest, age-appropriate answers. Show them things that they can do to regain some control. And above all, reassure them that their safety is your top priority. Now more than ever, SSM Health and News 3 Now encourage you to take time for kids. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection remains open to serve our customers and communities during these times of uncertainty. During Safer at Home, we've got you covered for all your plumbing service needs. Call us for help. We are here for you. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. For a hand up and help with your utility bills now during these difficult times, contact the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today.
I want to have a million dollars when I retire. Oh, great goal. So where do I start? Well, first you set up automatic transfers into savings. That can add up pretty quickly. For me, working on putting $1,000 into an emergency fund got me in a good saving habit. Already on it. Then put together a plan to get rid of debt and maximize your investments. You know, Summit helped me do it. Oh, that's great. I love how Summit gives people the knowledge and confidence to go after their goals. It's your money. Own it. Summit Credit Union. When it comes to a better night's sleep, maybe it's time to shop inside the box. And at DenverMattress.com, your perfect bed in a box is just a click away. Shop today and save big on factory direct bestsellers like the Easy Choice, the earth-friendly comfort of the Aspen, and for you sporty types, the Athlete's Choice. Plus, make your money work for you with four years no interest financing and free delivery right to your doorstep. Unpack a better tomorrow, tonight, only at Denver Mattress. The easiest way to get the right mattress. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Our mental health is just as important as our physical health, especially right now. If you're feeling anxious, stop for a few moments. Turn off, unplug, and breathe. Take care of yourself, and remember, we're all in this together. Let's head to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with a final check of our first warn forecast. Gary? Charles, there could be a few flurries this evening. Already they're starting to move into Grant County, but they'll move through pretty quickly and probably be gone by about 9 or 10 o'clock. Temperatures right now are in the upper 30s. James will still hanging out at 43 degrees, a little more sunshine there, but as the clouds move in and the temperatures drop, we'll see those flurries. By tomorrow morning, we'll be down in the mid-20s. Highs tomorrow, upper 30s. It'll be chilly again for Wednesday, but by the end of the week and into the weekend, temperatures will be closer to normal and should be quiet next week. We'll see you in 30 minutes. Producer now at 6.